Hey YouTube, Joyboy here. So, uh, in this video I want to talk about the Gorosei. A lot of things regarding the Gorosei, sort of the impression that I have of them, and pretty much everything that I think that you guys need to know about the Gorosei. The Gorosei are a fascinating topic to talk about in one piece, and honestly I think their direction in the story can go in many different ways. Um, so let's just jump right into the Gorosei and start off with the most interesting thing regarding them, which is that a lot of people think that the Gorosei are immortal um, and that they have been ruling the world government since the void century. Now the reason that people say this is because um, there's really only one piece of evidence which is that we see the Gorosei current times and then we see them in the flashback of Ohara uh, 20 years previous to the start of the story and it doesn't appear as though they age. Now this is kind of debatable because the panel in which we actually see them uh, is sort of black and white, not colored, their faces are in shadow. Um, so there's some possibility here that they were actually were younger, 20 years younger, and it's just not blatantly obvious to us. But I do think that there's reason to, to uh, speculate something off of this panel. The first thing that I find really odd about um, their faces in the Ohara panel is that we've seen the Gorosei previous to this chapter, which was like, this was chapter 394. Um, we first saw the Gorosei in chapter 233, their entire faces, everything about them. Um, there was no shadow, nothing. And so going into the future, it seems kind of odd to put their faces in shadow in the future. Like, normally when characters are first being introduced via um, Dindin Mushi calls like we see in Ohara, like for instance, Big Mom, when she first called the Straw Hats, her face was in shadow. But this had a point to it, which is that we weren't yet fully supposed to be revealed to Big Mom's appearance. But with the Gorosei, this isn't something that is true because we've already seen them. So why would they be put in shadow? Why was it necessary for Oda to do that? It's possible that he just did it because it's a Dinden Mushi call and uh, he wanted it to look more ominous. He wanted the situation to look more ominous. But at the same time, having already seen them in the past, there was really no reason to do that. Which really adds fuel to the speculation that the Gorosei looked different, or sorry, or looked the same, I should say. They, they looked the same in the past. Um, and that's the reason why Oda decided not to show their, their faces fully. To sort of fully reveal that they, over a 20 year time period, they haven't changed. And another interesting aspect of this is that over a 20 year time period, the Gorosei's membership has not changed at all, as far as that we're aware. The Gorosei of today is the same as the Gorosei of 20 years ago. All the characters there are present. The Samurai Gorosei is probably the hardest to identify, but we do have a bald Gorosei in the flashback of Ohara. Everyone else is the same. We even have the youngest member of the Gorosei, the blonde Gorosei. And while I would argue that he does look slightly different in the flashback, um, just he first of all, he doesn't seem to have a beard. Um, it's still odd for someone that young to already be a Gorosei. If we say that he's possibly like 40 or 50 current time uh, in One Piece, then in the Ohara flashback he would have been 20 years younger. So in his 20s most likely. And already a Gorosei, that's, that's questionable. However guys, for the most part I've stopped believing that the Gorosei are immortal. And this is, um, people still talk about it as though things haven't changed and which kind of boggles my mind. But we go to uh, uh, the beginning of the Zoark or the end of the Dressrosa arc and we get a conversation between Akainu and the Gorosei where we have some really huge information dropped. Which is that the Gorosei don't seem to have um, all the power of the world government. They are not the top dogs. There was a time in the past where I believe that the Gorosei were Celestial Dragons, sort of like just really prominent members of the Celestial Dragons, the leaders of the Celestial Dragons, that's why they're the Gorosei, that's why they have complete control over the world government. But that doesn't seem really likely now because we can see that Akainu says specifically to them that the Celestial Dragons went over their heads, um, took control of CP0 in order to sort of mobilize the efforts with CP0 and Doflamingo and um, basically you know, misdirect the news across the world for Doflamingo's purposes, which wasn't something that was author authorized um, through the Gorosei. And so what this implies is that the Celestial Dragons have more power than the Gorosei, which is something that would be really curious to me if the Gorosei were actually immortal 
um, and leaders of the world government since the void century, you would think that by at this point in time that their power would actually be greater than many of the celestial dragons still uh, that, that are being born and are you know not immortal. After a thousand years, you would think that the Gorosei would have the ability to tell the celestial dragons what to do. Just in my opinion, if they were really that important, that ancient, um, I just I just can't really see any situation in which after you know 900 years they can still be told what to do and also have their power undercut. And I think this also ties well with Moria's encounter with Doflamingo at the end of the Marine Fort arc where Doflamingo was hired to basically assassinate Moria and then Moria asked who ordered this? Did Sengoku order you to do this? And Doflamingo said someone higher up. And then we also see that, that Doflamingo has a specific conversation with a member of, it appears like, Cypherpole. Um, and so where Cypherpole sort of ordered this, which suggests that it wasn't the Gorosei, those weren't the higher-ups that ordered Moria's death, but rather the Celestial Dragons themselves, which paints the Gorosei in a lot better light, as though they weren't the ones who would willingly knock off one of the Shishibukai just because they were quote-unquote too weak. And this ties with another thing that I've noticed that not a lot of people talk about, which the Gorosei don't really seem to be bad people. They don't seem to be outright evil. They say many things that contradict this notion uh, throughout the several times that we've seen them. Which is to start off with, during the incident in Ohara, we actually see their reaction to basically telling uh, Cypherpole 9 to order the Buster Call against Ohara. We see one of the Gorosei put his hand on his head as though this isn't what he wanted at all. We also see um, in some of their later panels where they're talking about Jinbei that they actually wanted Jinbei to be part of the Shishibukai in order to foster a good relationship between the Fishmen and the humans. Which is something that we've seen that the Celestial Dragons definitely don't really care about and don't particularly want. We can see that the Celestial Dragons they have no goal really to to foster any sort of positive relationship between the non-humans and the humans where the Gorosei actually seem to be doing that. And the Gorosei also seem to have the best interests of the world in their mind, which is that um, in several situations they talk about the three great powers and the balance between them in order to sort of pre uh, prevent sort of the world's destruction. And while they don't seem to have too much control over the outcome of what happens in sort of the pirate world's politics, uh, the best that they can do is sort of hire a Shishibukai that has a lot of influence to sort of, um, I guess, uh, counter the Yonko and the other pirates. But other than that, they, the pirates do whatever they want to do and they're sort of just onlookers. And what I found interesting was that they were commenting on this and they were commenting on how Whitebeard was defeated and Blackbeard seems to be making his move and that he has a huge advantage over all the other pirates that are looking to become a Yonko because he knew Whitebeard's territory really well. And they even suggested that um, basically the only person that could really take down Blackbeard was another member of the Yonko, which sort of suggests to me that they weren't really game for Blackbeard becoming a Yonko, that they thought that maybe it was dangerous for Blackbeard to become a Yonko. Which makes some sense given the other Yonko that we see in the story like Shanks, Whitebeard, and Big Mom, who don't seem to be outright threats to the world. While they're, they're strong pirates and they have a lot of territory and influence, they're not the evil forces that we can presumably think Blackbeard would be uh, with the sort of ambition that Blackbeard has. And so then it would be kind of dangerous for Blackbeard to become a Yonko and would explain their fears and their hope that a Yonko would defeat him. So while I don't have a concrete conclusion to this video, I do want to say that um, you know, are the Gorsei immortal? I think that there's reason to think that and a reason to doubt it to the point to where I'm really just holding my thoughts on this particular topic. I definitely think it would be really weird if the Gorosei were immortal and leaders of the world government since the Void Century given their lack of complete power. Um, and then also we can see that that they seem to be decent people, which is a really interesting thought given that the, the world government and the Celestial Dragons, that entity, is probably the end game of One Piece. The, the world government and what they do across the world really leads to the most conflict out of everything that's going on. A lot of people think that Blackbeard is going to be the end game of One Piece, but Blackbeard really isn't harming the world to the extent that the world government is. The world government, you know, they, they enslave people that just aren't a part of their their organization. Uh, they kill people that don't really deserve it. Um, and 
they, they, they're basically the source of pretty much the entire conflict of the world for the most part. And we can be 100% certain that the world government is a corrupt entity that needs change. Whereas Blackbeard has a lot of ambition, but as far as his actual actions in the world, for the most part, um, a lot of the things that he's done that have been really bad have been in order to gain power through use of the corruption of the world government. Now, that's not to say that Blackbeard doesn't have some sort of end goal that is just atrocious, which would make Blackbeard even more of a threat than the world government. That's still a possibility. But right now, as it looks to me, the world government is the end game. And so given that, it seems really weird for the leaders of the world government outside of the Celestial Dragons, the leaders of the actual world government, the Gorosei, to actually be decent people. But honestly, given all the context clues, the Gorosei are painted as really just wise people that actually have a, a goal towards peace uh, in the end. But ultimately, their efforts are thwarted because of the people that rule them, the, the Celestial Dragons, uh, do not share the same values. In fact, you know, just from what we've been given in the story, I personally believe that Akainu is way more evil. Uh, despite his belief that he's doing the right thing, he, he takes a very hard view on justice and people who don't follow the, the right path. But I, I personally believe that Akainu is way worse than the Gorosei, and he needs to be taken out of power way, way more than they do. But yeah guys, this was a discussion post where I wanted to sort of touch on my thoughts on the main points of the Gorosei. Um, what are they like, um, and are they immortal? But let me know what you guys think. Um, also, I didn't include this in here, but a lot of people think that Bonnie is responsible for the Gorosei being immortal, because we do have a specific tie between Bonnie and the world government. But given that how we understand Bonnie's powers to work right now, it would seem kind of ridiculous for her to be able to uh, influences people's age permanently. As we know, Devil Fruits are overpowered, but there's always limitations to it. In the case of Bonnie, currently I believe that her limitation is that she can make people old, really old and really young, but not really in between. We haven't really seen that. Um, and then so, uh, we also don't know how her powers work. Does she have to stay near the people in order for the effect to last? Is there sort of, you know, I just, right now, I don't think that Bonnie is the one responsible for the Gorosei, if the Gorosei truly are immortal. But definitely we have a connection there between the world government and Bonnie, which is something that is a, a question that needs answering. But let me know what you guys think. Like the video if you like the video. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. And as always, dudes, have a wonderful day.